Hello everyone and welcome to NGIB Preparation. So today the topic that we're going to cover due to popular demand is the topic of market failure and specifically negative externalities as a type of market failure. So just to recap, market failure in itself is just a failure of any market to achieve allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency is where MB equals MC. It's a way of allocating resources in a way that is socially optimal and maximizes community surplus or the sum of consumer and producer surplus. So in the case of negative externalities, we have a situation where the production or consumption of a good leads to spillover costs to unrelated third parties. So you can have a negative externality of consumption or of production. In this case, what I'm drawing here is a negative consumption externality. And that happens because the marginal private benefits have been greater than the marginal social benefits, right? So in other words, the private benefits of an individual consuming this good is greater than the benefits to society of you consuming this good. And negative externalities of consumption always happen in the case of demerit goods, things like alcohol or cigarettes, where it may be beneficial for you individually uh, to smoke a cigarette or to drink a beer. We say that it is not as beneficial to society due to the associated healthcare burden costs, um, air pollution, secondhand smoke, etc. So this leads to the, the, the divergence between MPB and MSV and that creates a deadweight loss and an overconsumption. And that's how you would draw the diagram in a paper. Oftentimes for your paper one essays, you'll have to answer the ways in which we can solve negative externality problems. So one of the most common ways that you solve negative externalities or the overconsumption of things like alcohol or cigarettes is that you tax them indirectly. In other words, you tax the per unit of the good or service. And what this does is it increases cost of production for the producer and shifts the supply curve. The supply curve in this diagram is essentially MPC, marginal private costs. And so MPC shifts to MPC plus tax. And this brings up the price of the relevant products like cigarettes and will ideally push people to consume less of this good. You also should know an example for the taxation or the solution of the negative externalities, but really one of the most important things that you need to know besides drawing the diagram and understanding what the negative externality is in examples is knowing how to evaluate the different solutions. So the benefits of using indirect taxation to decrease the consumption of demerit goods is that it's a way of internalizing the externality. You're increasing the cost of the product in order to signal to consumers that there are societal costs associated with their actions. Another benefit is that it creates a lot of tax revenue. So for a lot of countries, cigarette tax represents a big source of the government budget and this cigarette tax or alcohol tax can then be used to subsidize health care or to compensate third parties that have been affected by secondhand smoke. What about consequences or disadvantages? So the disadvantages is that it's actually really difficult to come to an estimate of what the per unit tax should actually be. In other words, you would have to be able to estimate the per unit marginal cost. So you would have to give a monetary estimate of what the cost of me smoking, for example, is to society and then turn that into a per unit tax to completely fix the overconsumption. But in reality, that's impossible to do. So any tax that you place is not going to be as effective as you want. Also because these goods, these demerit goods tend to be very PED inelastic. They're addictive and so you would have to increase the tax significantly in order to cause any change in consumption. The other problem is that taxes or increases in price in general are often regressive. They're bad for income inequality because it's always going to be the low income groups that disproportionately suffer as a result of higher priced goods and services. Another option is to use regulation. So regulation is a not market-based policy. So in other words, you're not really trying to increase the price of the product, but you're setting rules, you're setting legislation. And the goal is to reduce spillover costs on third parties. So you might not reduce consumption, but you're trying to protect groups that suffer from secondhand smoke, for example. So some examples would be age restrictions, minimum age restrictions would reduce the number of consumers in the market and therefore decrease demand for alcohol or cigarettes. No indoor smoking is implemented in a lot of places to prevent secondhand smoke. In places like Austria, laws have been passed where you cannot smoke with a child in the car in order so that if you choose to smoke, again, you cannot increase costs for third parties. The third solution would be negative advertising. So trying to teach people that what they're doing is actually not as beneficial to them as they believe and the costs are much higher. So if you've ever seen a packet of cigarettes, you'll probably see that they have quite gruesome images of the consequences of smoking. That can be considered negative advertising because the goal is to reduce the marginal private benefits. You're trying to reduce the perception of the benefits of this good and bring it closer to MSB, reduce demand, reduce consumption. But if we were to evaluate these policies, both of them turn out to be quite expensive. So 
enforcement monitoring of regulation in relation to indoor smoking, for example, can be quite expensive. And if the government is not resourced enough, then it is no longer effective. For negative advertising, it's also quite expensive and people may not actually react to the negative advertising, especially if the problem is not information failure. So it might be that people know how bad smoking is, but they continue to smoke because of time inconsistency issues or because of how addictive the good is. In that case, negative advertising is not so useful. Okay, so so far we've been talking about negative consumption externalities. In this case, we're going to talk about negative externalities of production. So when the production of a good or service actually results in negative spillover costs to third parties. So unlike a consumption externality, the divergence here between the curves is between MSC and MPC. The difference is between the marginal private cost, so the cost to the individual producer of producing the good, and the marginal social cost. In this case, the cost to society of the producer producing this good is higher because of, for example, pollution, contamination of nearby water sources, etc. etc. And so then that creates a deadweight loss and an overproduction of the good relative to the socially optimal level. So how do we fix this? So the first way is through regulation. So actually forcing the firm to implement green technology or to change the methods of their production. And this will increase production costs for the firm and actually shift the supply curve MPC closer or at MSC. Again, the same evaluation points as before apply. Regulation is expensive. Monitoring is expensive. And that can lead to an opportunity cost in terms of government spending. A second option is a per unit indirect tax. Again, increasing production costs, bringing up the MPC curve to MSC curve, increases the cost and the price of the product, and so will ideally bring down production. But actually, in this case, an indirect tax is less effective than in a consumption externality because when you tax the per unit of the good, the producer has no incentive, no motivation to actually change the methods of their production into kind of greener technologies. Whereas if you implement a carbon tax, so a tax per unit of CO2 emission that the producer emits while producing, then this actually creates a so-called lasting incentive for the producer to switch to more green technologies so that they can produce more and more with less emissions. And this ideally will create a situation where the most cost competitive firm is the firm that can produce the most units of output per unit of CO2 emission. Lastly, we have a cap and trade scheme. So a cap and trade scheme so the market for a tradable permit is exactly that. The government or international organizations or intergovernmental agreements will agree to set a cap, to set a limit on CO2 emissions, and then they create a market for permits. So in other words, firms or countries have to pay for their right to pollute. They have to pay for almost these kinds of permits or licensing to actually pollute. And if you exceed the limits of the CO2 emissions, then you have to buy more tradable permits and that reduces your profits. So this creates, again, a lasting incentive for firms to reduce their emissions so that they don't have to pay as much for these tradable permits or their right to pollute. It also is beneficial because it means that we can actually have goals on what the CO2 emissions will be, whereas for carbon taxes and direct taxes, we can't really set a goal. Okay, great. So how do we apply this to an essay question? So for a 10 mark paper one, if we got the question using an appropriate externalities diagram, explain why government might decide to impose a price floor on a demerit good. So I put this here because conveniently price floor is the only solution that we haven't mentioned in terms of negative externalities of consumption. As you probably remember, price floor is a price control where you set a minimum price below which a producer cannot legally sell it at. So you're increasing the price of these demerit goods, alcohol or cigarettes, for example. So the structure for a 10 marker is you first define the relevant terms. So you define negative externalities as when the consumption or production of a good leads to spillover costs to third parties. You define a price floor as what I just said, a demerit good as a good that results in negative externalities. Then you draw the diagram to show negative externalities with the price floor above the equilibrium price as here. And just remember that the axes here for any externality diagram is always cost and benefit on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. And then the next step here is to explain the diagram, of course, but then to have an example. So in the example that I have here, it's minimum unit pricing in Wales, where they actually implemented a price floor to raise the minimum price of alcohol and reduce the overconsumption. Then for the 15 marker, if we got this question, you can see that the structure is, again, introduction, definitions, and then from there on, you kind of want to structure it in terms of pros and cons. 
So here they're asking if government regulations is the best way to reduce the overconsumption of demerit goods. So we want to have pros of regulation as well as a diagram showing that regulation will effectively shift MPB, shift the demand curve closer to MSB because it will, for example, reduce the number of consumers through minimum age restrictions or reduce the attractiveness of the good because you cannot smoke indoors, etc. And then you have the benefits of uh, regulation, so direct, non-optional, reduces spillover costs, etc. Then you have the problem with regulation, so the cost of enforcement does not reduce consumption necessarily, etc. And then you have the alternatives, so why could an indirect tax be better or a price floor, etc. And then you can also have some diagrams showing the indirect tax to strengthen your answer. And this is where you need a conclusion. In the 10 mark, you don't necessarily need a conclusion because you're not evaluating, uh, evaluating you're just explaining. But here you need a conclusion saying clearly which you think is the best measure in which scenarios. Okay, so we covered a lot of um, topics today and I hope that was useful in reviewing the basic concepts, but then also applying it to a particular past paper questions. If you need any help on this, please leave comments and, and I'll try to release more content and the next video will likely be on um, positive externalities and also on how to write your international trade IA since I know a lot of you are struggling with that. And yeah, please stay tuned, please subscribe if you haven't already to stay in touch with our content.